Our very first speaker is a young man who um, I am honored to know, honored to watch him grow. I tell you, if I could adopt him, his mom would probably beat me up, but I tried to. He's already got the right last name anyway. But he's an awesome man. Serious, serious about God. He's serious about his relationship. The incredible thing is, as we train up a child the way that they should go, we see the evidence of the time that you spend with your child by how they act and what they do. doesn't mean they're always going to be perfect. But you see something inside of them that gives you hope. This young man, if he continues on in the course of God, is directing him to God. Is going to do awesome things for God. Because even at a young age, he desires to serve him. While all the other children are running off doing whatever children do, I feel like this young man spends time with God. Not to say he's perfect. God doesn't call perfect. He calls ones he can perfect. Amen. And God wants to do that. So this evening, tonight, it gives me great pleasure and honor to present to you someone. And I shared this with my wife. I'm not going to say much more about it than this. God has a special plan for this young man. I shared it with my wife, and I know something's going to happen this young man in the LCC. That's all I'm going to say. But I just want to say this. Pray for him as he comes for me. My son, my friend, my brother in the Lord, my co-laborer, Brother Trinity Williams. Let's receive him. Come on. Come on. I just want to thank you and uh, just, just let's just let's get started. When I think of who was impacted by New Year's, I think of people. People that did not make it to the year 2015. I think of the people that think that New Year's is all about going out to dinner, having parties, doing things just to have fun. But what you have to do is commit yourself to the Lord. You have to and need to repent. There's a difference between wanting to change and repentance. Technically, when New Year's is basically one year to the next year. But from a believer's view, it's another year for you to ask God for forgiveness. Another year for you to, get, for you to turn around in your life. Another year to get ready for Jesus to come down on earth. And He asking you, are you ready? It's time. Will you be ready? Will you be ready? Amen. Will you be ready? You might believe in Buddha, Muslim, Catholic, you even might believe in an idol. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. As long you still have time to turn around. Yeah. 
You, you could be anywhere. You could be in a hospital bed. Outside of the ground, homeless looking at the I could even be at home. You could be in your car, broken down on the side of the road. You don't even have to be in a church. You could be on an airplane, at work, in another country. It doesn't matter where you are. As long as you're right with Jesus Christ and are saved, he will call you his own. You can be on that path that is wrong, that wide path, which everyone is on, including myself. But go ahead and turn around. You don't know the day nor hour. Only God knows. So make this moment count, everyone. Make 2014 go on to 2015, the beginning of your new life. Some may want to know why. Why should I believe in this Jesus Christ you're talking about? Let me give you a personal testimony of why I think, and why, well not why I think, but why I believe he is real. When I was first born, I had what the doctor would call a heart murmur. There was something wrong with my heart. It was not working correctly. Now I'm not trying to make you feel bad for me. I'm just trying to make you, I'm not trying to make you do anything. I'm just trying to tell you why you should believe. I had to have emergency surgery and I was hospitalized for 10 days. I'm a walking miracle. I could have been I could have been dead to this day. That's why my mom always told me to live each day like it's your last. And I always try my best to do that. Now I can't make you believe, but if you want Christ in your life, then repent and tell Jesus that He is your Lord and Savior and also your life. In closing, everyone, I speak from the heart by asking you, do you know where you're going? Do you really know? I'm speaking to everyone, elderly people and even people just like me, alike, that this is the time. This is your time. Now don't be ashamed of anything that has taken place before this moment. God our Lord and Savior is here now. And please take this opportunity to say the sinner's prayer quietly or aloud and walk out of here in faith and belief. You may not feel different, but keep walking and keep the faith. God is real. And I want to share one last thing, brothers and sisters. Salvation is a free gift to everyone who believes in Jesus Christ. That's right. Once a person trusts in Christ as his or her personal Savior, that person belongs to God. Yes. And it's free from the power of sin and the assurance of eternal life. Receiving salvation makes us God's children. Salvation is the work of the Holy Spirit. Trusting in Jesus Christ is the only way to be saved. Salvation includes gaining a relationship with God. Receiving salvation means turning from our sins. Salvation is by God's grace alone. Salvation rescues us from Satan's dominion. And our Savior has been obtained by Jesus Christ. Jesus' blood. Sorry. I am honored, Pastor. I thank you so much. And I want to thank my mom, too.
She's with me with, since day one. I thought I was good for 10 days. I was still in there. He was there. I thank you, Mom, for helping me with this. I'm, I'm honored to be your son. Thank you for your time, everyone.